I kept thinking about him for weeks after. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I thought I would share my story about how I discovered that I like boys. If you guys want to hear about that, keep on watching. First, I want to give a shout out to my awesome Patreon members, Gaston F., Joshua Patterson, Joe Lagan, and Jason. Thank you guys for all of your support. If you guys want to get to know me a little bit better on a more intimate level, you should definitely check out my Patreon. Okay guys, so let's get into a little bit of my backstory growing up in a small town, small country town in Maryland. So growing up, I have to say, I had a pretty normal upbringing. My dad worked a lot, my parents were divorced, so basically my dad raised me and um, he made sure that I stayed out of trouble growing up when I was super young because I was in sports, I was really occupied with that. He always made sure I got to my practices and my games. He was always watching them. And um, I just had a pretty normal upbringing. I had girlfriends all the way up until ninth grade. So I had game back then. I had no issue m making friends. I didn't have any behavioral issues. I was a good kid. So let's fast forward to 12 years old. At this time, my parents were divorced, of course. So my sister and I would go to my mom's house on the weekends. My sister's four years older than me, so she was 16 at this time. And she actually had a boyfriend, and she liked to invite him over a lot. Even when I was at my dad's house, he would hang out a lot with her. So I knew him. We got along pretty well. So this day in particular, she invited her boyfriend over, and he actually invited one of his buddies over just to come over and hang out with us. And growing up, I would hang out with my sister and her friends a lot because we got along pretty well. And I wasn't, like, immature and annoying, so I think she could kind of tolerate me more so than some other sibling relationships. So her boyfriend invited his buddy over, and he showed up on a bright yellow, like, neon yellow, Jixer speed crotch rocket motorbike. <laughs> And I was so fascinated by it because I had just never been that close to one at the time and I was just touching it, looking at it, and I was also really fascinated by him. He looked so Hollywood and he was tan and just so attractive, but I had never looked at guys to be attractive. I've, I've never been attracted to a guy before that, so I was kind of like confused with what I was feeling. He was really cool, and at the time, again, guys, I was 12 years old, and he had to have been in his mid to late 20s. So he was substantially older than me, you know, and more mature and just hot. He was hot. <laughs> I still have the image of him in my head. He offered to take me for a ride on his bike, and I kind of wanted to give my sister and her boyfriend some alone time because I was getting kind of bored with them anyway. So I took up his offer, and um, I hopped up on the back of his bike after he was on it. I put my arms around him very lightly, like I wasn't even really touching him. And I remember distinctly, he took his hands like this and like pulled tight. So my arms were like wrapped tight around his body. And I just remember like my heart <laughs> melted. I was like, oh. <laughs> like, it was the most weird feeling ever. I did not know what I was feeling at all. It felt wrong at first, actually. Like, it felt like I shouldn't be doing that. But that, that feeling went away pretty quickly. So once we got rolling, I just kept my arms around him. And he had this cologne on that smelled so musky. and But musky in a good way. I love a musky smell. And not in, in, like, Axe body spray way. It was, like, natural musk mixed with cologne. Just so good. <laughs> and so we took, we went on a ride, and it was much longer than I was expecting it to be. I was expecting him just to take me down the street, you know, maybe hit the throttle a couple times. But this was actually, like, 15 to 20 minutes. We went a couple miles, and... I was having a lot of fun. I just loved holding on to him. I'd never been that close to a guy before, you know, and 
I was just savoring the moment as much as I could. But I still wasn't thinking like, oh, I, I want to kiss him or I wish he would kiss me or something. It was just kind of like a weird feeling. I was just taking it in. So after the ride, we went back to my mom's house and he hung out with us for a little while and I got to know him and uh, he hung out with me, which was cool. And he was like, he was treating me like I was his age, which I really appreciated. Made me feel like I wasn't just a little kid, you know? So after he left, I actually got pretty sad. I don't know why I was getting sad. I think it was just because I really enjoyed him and I just missed him. I missed his presence, I guess. I kept thinking about him for weeks after in a very intense way. Like I had never longed for somebody as much as I was longing for him. And those feelings started to like affect me because I didn't know how to deal with them. And I didn't know who to talk about with, you know, to, to ask for help f for these feelings because it's not like they were causing me to go in insane or anything, but they were just uncomfortable. My sister actually broke up with that boyfriend about a month after the bike ride. And um, I was pretty sad about that because at that point I knew I was never going to see him again ever. And it just upset me, but... I tried to just keep on going with my life and push those uncomfy feelings down. So after this happened, I started to get a lot more curious about guys. I started to look at some guys that I went to school with in a different way. I started to just have like uncomfortable feelings inside because at the time I just did not want to be the guy that likes guys because there was nobody in my school that was like that. and. I just didn't want to be made fun of. I didn't want to be the laughing stock. And it was just really hard to try to like bury those feelings and just not deal with them. I started to even look at my best friend differently. And I hated myself for looking at him and feeling this way because I knew that if my friend was looking at me that way, I would probably not like it or want to be friends with them anymore. And me and this buddy had a lot of memories together. We, we had a bond and I didn't want to ruin that bond. So I started to rebel at this point. I was about 13 or turning 13 soon. And I just remember like not listening to my dad's rules anymore, not wanting to play sports, not wanting to like be around my family, just wanting to like break the rules and hang out with older people. And that's what was beginning to happen. I was walking to the park after school and hanging out with all the older kids that had already graduated. Don't ask me why there was like 18, 19, 20 year olds hanging out at the park waiting for high schoolers to come out, but there were. And those were honestly some of the, the most enjoyable and memorable times of my life hanging out with all of the park crew because it was just such an escape from reality. It was such a a good way for me to like forget about everything. <laughs> and that sounds horrible because it, it kind of is. It was kind of like the bad rebellious crowd, you know, every town has them. So I began to hang out with that crowd a lot more. I started getting into trouble with the law and just doing things that a 13, 14 year old should never be doing and hanging around people that I should have never been around. And that was all because I was running from my inner feelings. I was just so deep down sad and uncomfortable with myself. So I decided to put off this like, you know, like hardcore, cold, kind of mean, just rebellious personality. I, I didn't want anybody to know who the real me was. And it wasn't until f age 14, I got into a lot of trouble. I'm not going to go into the details on that, but I got into a lot of trouble at 14. And from that moment on, I remember I made such a 180. I started taking honors classes. I started doing really good in school, getting gr amazing grades. 
I was just getting along better with my parents. I was making better friends and surrounding myself with like more genuine people who actually cared about me. I'm really glad that that situation happened when I was 14, even though it was probably the hardest struggle I've ever had to overcome in my entire life. I'm really grateful for it because without it, I would probably not be in Arizona. I would probably never have gotten into my dream college. And I would probably be just broke and possibly homeless. I don't know, but I'm grateful for the life that I live now. And I had to go through that rebellious stage to become comfortable with who I am. And mind you guys, it wasn't until senior year that I came out of the closet. So, you know, things, you have to give them time. You, you can't rush everything. You may not understand everything that's happening to you at a particular time, but there will be a point where you look back and you can understand why you went through that. So I'm very grateful for finding out that I like guys. And um, sometimes I wish it would have happened sooner because there were so many opportunities I probably could have taken, but don't question God's judgment. Let me know what you guys thought about this video. Uh, I tried to get all of my thoughts out, so I apologize if I was talking too fast at times, but let me know what you thought about the video, and I will see you on Tuesday. Bye, guys.